Hello, my name is Jan Thielemann and in this video I want to show you how you can create your own, own callouts and what callouts are and how to use them. So, what is a callout? Um, a callout is a piece of code which gets executed when you leave a given um, field. For example, when I create a new sales order and I um, select the business partner, the fields for the location and the contact gets automatically filled. And this is done by a callout. So when I change something and leave the field, a callout can get executed. And you can attach a callout to every field in the application. Um, callouts don't get executed uh, if they were executed once and there is no change in the field. So here's an example. If I would have attached a callout to the description field and I would do some th changes like this and leave the field so the field loses its focus, then the callout gets executed. When I uh, go to the field um, back and leave it again without changing something, then the callout wouldn't get executed. But as soon as I make a change and leave the field, the callout will get executed again. So how can you create your own callouts? To do this, the first thing you do is create a new plugin. And since I don't want to um, put my plugin into the core, I uncheck the use default location checkbox and create a new directory. I use the same name as my project's name. I choose the Equinox OSGI framework. Here I set the execution environment to Java 6 because it can always happen that a client um, still uses Java 6. Uh, the name and the idea is okay for me. The idea has to be uh, unique. So make sure you give it a unique name. And now I click on finish. Now I create a new package for my callout class. And I also create a new package for my factory class. In the callout package I create a new class and I call it my callout but you can call it whatever you want. And here it's important to implement the I. Oh, I forgot that I have to, um, to add something to my dependencies. So here I add the org adempier base and the org adempier plugin utils packages to my dependencies. And now I implement the I column callout interface and the method it provides me. Then I go to my factory package and create a new factory. In this class I implement the I column callout factory and its method. This factory is to provide uh, a service via the uh, OSGI framework. So if idempier starts and it um, will ask the framework if it has any callout factories and then when I open a given table it will ask all the factories if they provide 
a call out for a given um, table and a given column name. <coughs> so I want to create a call out for the description field in the sales order window. So what I do now is to check if the table name is equal to the M order table name. And I also check if the column name is equal to the description field. And if both is true, then I return my callout. And as you see here, you can um, return um, more than one callout at once, and that's because um, yeah, you could have uh, uh, as many call you can have as many callouts as you want for a column and a table uh, for a column in a table, and um, yeah, you could also use this one factory for different tables and columns. So now I have to um, take a look at a piece of code I already created. Give me a second so I can check this. Here it is. So what I always like to do is to create a list uh, in which I store all the callouts uh, I want to return and at the end when I did all my checks and added all my callouts to the list I convert this list to a new array and return it. So now I check um, if the table name and the column name fits what I'm looking for and then I add a new callout. And in this case it's my callout. Now I could check for other um, columns and let's do this um, just for showing you. And here I will use the organization field. So now in both cases, either um, it's a description field or the um, organization field, I will return my own callout. In the callout itself, um, I can return a string, but this string is an error message. So normally you would return null, but if um, you do some calculations and there happens to be an error, then you would um, return an error message and uh, yeah, this message would be shown to the user. You have a bunch of objects here which you can use and the first one is the context of the window. So when you're in this window, the context has information about all the other fields for example. It knows what's in the business partner field or what's in the target document type field. Also you get um, the window number 
which is the window number of this window in the application dictionary. Then you get a reference to the grid tab. The grid tab, um, for example, has methods to um, write values into all the other fields on the tab. And you get the field from which the callout um, is called. So if um, uh, I have changes here and leave the field, then my M field would be the description field. And the M field has information about the column name and what's inside the field and some other interesting stuff. Also, you get the new value and the old value. So this is the value which was in the field before the change and this is the new value in the field. So now let's just um, yeah, when my callout gets executed, then I can, for example, print the color name. So here I use a C logger, which is the compare logger. Um, I recommend you to use the C logger when you um, want to print something on the console or in the log files. Since my application's log level is um, only to show server and warnings, um, I use log warning. But normally you would look, uh, log um, other things like uh, the log level info, or yeah, there are other log levels like um, info, config, fine, finer, and finest. Yeah, and server but for now I use warning. So here I want to log the M field get color name. Also I want to log the new value and the old value. Also, I want to set the value of another field, for example, the document number. And I do this by calling mtap set value. And here you can um, either provide a grid field, but since we don't have reference to a grid field, we only have the reference to the grid field from, from which um, the callout gets executed we can use this method and here I will yeah set it to test okay now we have to create a new um, component definition so the OSGI framework can know that our plugin provides a column callout factory. And to do this, you create a new file, go to plugin development, component definition, and um, give it a name, which is, it uh, has to be unique in your plugin. So I call mine my callout factory, and click on finish. Then I have to provide a unique name. And I like to put um, the plugin's name in here, followed by what type of factory it is. In this case it's a callout factory. And now I can be sure that this component definition is unique by its name. Then I select the factory class right here. And here I have to add a property file called service ranking. It's an integer value and I give it the value of 100. 
And what this um, property does is that when the OSGI framework asks the um, bundles if they provide a factory class for a given service and uh, all the plugins respond with their um, classes, then the classes are ordered and they are ordered by their service ranking. And in some cases, IDMPR provides a default um, factory which provides default um, yeah, classes for a given service and if you don't put the service ranking property in it then it, then it can happen that IDMPR finds the default implementation and then uh, stops searching for other implementations and then it can happen that your own classes um, won't be loaded. Now I also have to um, tell the component definition which service it's provide and it's the I column callout factory service and I have to make sure that the uh, component definition is in my manifest so here it has to be an entry called service component and here I have to my, uh, have my XML file in it otherwise the um, framework wouldn't know about the component definition yeah so that's basically all you have to do now I will test it and hopefully it will work without um, other changes. But before it can work I have to activate my plugin and here I select um, true at auto start so I don't have to start it manually. Now I apply it and run it. So let's do a test. And as you can see here, I got the old value, the new value, and the column name was description. The same goes for the organization field. But since the organization field is um, yeah, a drop-down list um, with references to a table, I get um, the idea because in the database the ID of the column is stored, not the name. The um, drop-down editor um, is programmed that it shows the name instead of the idea, so it's more convenient for the user. And yeah, you can see it's the AD org ID fail field. So most of the time what you will do with the callout is to set the value. Oh yes, here we see that um, the document number was set to test also. Yeah, so what, you, what do you use callouts for? Most of the time you use the callout to set values of other fields in the same window. But you could also do some um, yeah, calculations for the field you are leaving or you can could enter um, yeah, some uh, uh, only one letter for example and replace the letter by a whole sentence or you could um, write a variable to the context or whatever you like but normally you would use it to set um, other values of the same window. Yeah I hope um, this little explanation helped you and see you in the next video.